Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Travis. I'd like to welcome you back to Coffee, Computers, and More. And today we're going to do something very different from the more category of the channel. We're going to do some vehicle shopping. So Ford has recently released a lot of these specifications and also details on the brand new Ford Maverick pickup truck that's going to be coming out this fall. Now, I am in the market for a truck. I've been in the market for a pickup truck for quite a while, and I've kind of bounced between different models and types. So what we're going to do is we're going to go check out the Ford website and look at the different trims that are being offered for the Ford Maverick. We'll check out some of the options that are there. I'm going to build a vehicle on each trim, and we're going to see what the price comes out to. Now, i got to be honest with you. I was really, really interested in the Hyundai Santa Cruz. I still am. Um, I think that's a really cool-looking vehicle. I don't need something heavy-duty for off-road use, but I do have to haul stuff once in a while. Um, I do participate in some outdoors activities and things like that. And I thought the Santa Cruz would be the way to go. But when I look at how truckish the Maverick is and how much more truckable it is, if that's even a real word, uh, the Maverick is really starting to get my attention. So we're going to start off by going on over to the Ford website. And when you go there, go to Ford.com. By the way, I'm not being paid by Ford or endorsed by Ford. I'm just really, really digging this pickup. And the price is what really gets me. So we're looking at a base price that's about five to $6,000 below the price of a Chevy Colorado, another truck which is excellent, which I'm also interested in, and way below the base price of a Chevy Silverado. In fact, I had just purchased a vehicle recently, and I was going to try to pick up a Silverado, but I couldn't get one within the price range I was looking for. And so that's why I kind of went back to square one and just bought a little hatchback all-wheel drive vehicle I could drive around for now, but I'm still interested in a truck. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we go to the Ford website. It says meet the Maverick. Now you can do this on your own, but I thought maybe I'd just take you through the different trim levels. We'll talk about the price and talk about the options and why maybe this is going to be the vehicle for you. All right, so they go through, they've got the model lineup. We're going to start over here in the top right corner where it says build and price. So let's go ahead and build and price a vehicle and just see how much this is going to cost. So on the low end, we've got the XL. So you're going to get yourself the 2.5 liter hybrid engine which I believe it's around 195 horsepower, somewhere around there with the hybrid electric motor. And it's going to cost you $19,995. I think that's before destination cost and any other options, okay? But you're still going to get a truck that's going to be functional and usable, uh, front wheel drive. Now, if you want, you can also get the two liter EcoBoost engine. So I'm actually going to do that on my build and just see kind of what the difference is with the options I get on XL versus the XLT. So let's go ahead and start our build. Now, one thing that kind of caught me off guard initially is, I've kind of looked this over previously, is the different colors that are available. So you've got three, four, five, six, seven different colors. I was hoping for an orange or red. That's not going to happen. So we have a couple options here. We've got shadow black. We have Oxford white. We also have area 51, which is kind of a cool color if you've ever seen any other pictures of it. Uh, cactus gray. We have carbonized gray. Let's see, Iconic Silver, and last but not least, we have got Velocity Blue. So just for something different, let's go with uh, let's go with Area 51. I think it's kind of a bluish green color, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go with Area 51. I think it's kind of neat. All right, so we'll go ahead and move down. So this is the XL Super Crew. So you've got yourself four doors. you got yourself a pretty decent-sized bed. So this comes with a 100A Equipment Group, which, you know, I'm just going to kind of summarize this as quick as I can. You've got the Hybrid Engine with Start-Stop Technology. 8-inch center stack screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio, 4-pass uh, connect with 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot ability, uh, pre-collision -coll pre assist with automatic emergency braking, LED uh, headlamps, and the flex bed. And you can click on it and you can view even more of the features. So starting off, it's going to include some sweet steel wheels, 17-inch uh, wheels. They kind of look like the, uh, the wheels that we're seeing on the base level Bronco that's out there. You've got some 225-65 R17 tires. Those are going to be included. Now, for extra options, there's a few things I want to add. I definitely want the splash guards. So I live in Nebraska, and we do get some messy weather from time to time. You do deal with some mud and snow, obviously gravel, rain, and so on. So we do get kind of the gamut of weather. So I'm going to want that to protect the vehicle. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We've got the bed divider kit, the toolbox swing case, driver's side or passenger side. Don't need that. I also don't want a tonneau cover because I want to be able to throw stuff in the vehicle whenever I can. Now, if you want to go that route, you've got some options that go from $560 to $1,160. you got a bed liner, a bed tray liner, a spray-in bed liner, which is what I want, which will protect the bed from getting damaged when I throw stuff in the back of it. And they also have a hard drop-in bed liner, too, and the prices all vary. I like how they give you different price points 
for these different options. That's cool for somebody that might not have a ton of money, but uh, they still want to get this truck and they still want to add a few options to it and so on. Okay, moving on, we've also got the manual rear sliding window. Yes, please. They give you some options for a cargo bed net. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and add that too. Uh, you also have a, an option for it. I mentioned this, a bed extender, and that's going to allow you to really take full advantage of that shorter bed, which I can't remember the bed dimensions off the top of my head. We'll have to look that up before we get done here. Uh, trailer hitch receiver with four pin connector. Yep, because once in a while I do have to tow. Uh, full size spare tire. Absolutely. Wheel lock kit. Not so worried about that. So we'll go on. Uh, the interior color, surprisingly, it says black onyx, and that's, or onoxy is what it says. Uh, it says it is included, so you're not going to have the options at the XL trim level to go with any other interior um, uh, color options. Uh, seating, cloth bucket front seats included. That's fine with me. Interior options. Okay, we've got the manual sliding rear, rear window. Floor liners, all-weather tray style, including carpeted floor mats. I'm going to go without the carpet. I'm just going to go with just the rubber floor mats. We usually get WeatherTechs, and I usually spend about $135, $125 for a set of the front weather check floor mats that I have in my current vehicles. I'm going to pass on the sunroof that tends to take out some of your head, um, your headroom that you have up in there. Console vault, absolutely. Sometimes I've got some expensive items in my vehicle, and that's a $390 option, which is going to push the price up a little bit. But to protect things that are important to you, I think that's definitely good as it does have a lockable option. Uh, AM FM radio with six speakers, okay, that's fine, with really no option to upgrade that I'm seeing. Now, I want to go with a 2.5 liter uh, hybrid engine. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to go with a 2 liter EcoBoost engine because I need a little more power. Um, I do want the all wheel drive option, which is going to boost the price up to $3,305 more than what we were already looking at. Now, it's also going to give you an 8 speed automatic transmission, whereas if you went with the 2.5 liter engine, it was going to be the CVT transmission. All right, so we're going to let that load and build. So while that's happening, the summary, in the end, comes out to $26,905. And when you look at the um, Hyundai Santa Cruz, you're going to be getting very similar options across the board. But, I mean, they're different, slightly different dimensions between the Santa Cruz and the Maverick. And they show you what the exterior is going to look like. They show you what the interior is going to look like. Here's all the options that you guys can see on the uh, right-hand side. I'll tell you what, why don't we go ahead and move me over to the left side here. might make it easier when we check out the other trims. And I can click on reserve if I want to, and I, I believe I can put a down payment on one if I'm interested. I think it's $100 to reserve it with an option to buy when the time is there. Uh, financing, it's showing me $457 for 60 months. And you can see all the different prices. Base MSRP, $21,080. Options and accessories, destination charges. Uh, total MSRP comes out to $26,905. All right, so that is my XL model that I've built. So if I'm interested... That's what we're looking at from there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start all over again. And this time we're going to check out the XLT trim model and see what we have for options. Uh, maybe we can get some different color options on this one or possibly some, some different interior, exterior options. I don't know. We're going to find out. So we'll go to Meet Maverick again, back at the Ford website. All right, build and price. And we'll check out the, uh, the final specifications on these trucks. When we get done, so we've got an XLT, uh, $22,280. Start your build. Okay, we're going to see what this comes with that's going to be a little bit different. So you go to XLT, what are you going to get? We've got a lot of different color options here. We're going to go with that red color that I wanted earlier. Hot pepper red. There we go. Uh, you do have a couple different shades of white and silver, and they've also got a yellow that you can get, which I believe we've also seen over on the Bronco. Uh, oh, cyber orange. My bad. I'm going to go back to hot pepper red because that's cool. It actually looks a lot like the hatchback that I drive every day. So now this has the 300A equipment group, which is going to get you 17-inch painted aluminum wheels, a painted gray grill bar, uh, navy pier and medium slate interior with orange accents. I've seen the two-tone interior. It looks really cool. So you're going to be paying a little bit more, okay? Uh, power exterior, side view mirrors. Okay, I didn't realize we didn't have that before. Power tailgate lock, cruise control. Flex bed with rear cubby storage and 10 tie downs. And you can go through if you guys are interested and look at all those different features. So let's go ahead and add four Copilot 360 for safety. Let's go ahead and add the XLT luxury package. So we're going to option this one out just with a little bit more than what we did on the XL package. We're going to go with the standard wheels and the standard tires. 225-65R17 inch tires are going to be there for you. We're going to go with those splash cards again. This time we're going to add a bed divider kit. 
And what that does is that allows you to turn your bed into two different levels by putting in some two by fours. And it also has a mold in it that allows you to build a bike rack. So you can transport a couple bicycles side by side with the uh, front tire stored in front. Let's go ahead and add a, a tonneau cover. We'll go with the hard trifold tonneau cover. Now remember, as you build this, you'll be building it to your budget. So you've got a lot of different options for whatever you want to go with. Um, we're going to go again with that spray and bed liner like we had before. It's definitely a preference for an option for me. Uh, window air deflector, no. Manual rear sliding window. Oh, why don't we go ahead and click on that? I can't remember if we get the power option or not. We'll find out. Uh, trailer hitch receiver with four-pin connectors included. Bed tie-downs are included. Full-size spare tires included. So they're giving you more items right out of the box with the XLT, obviously because it's a higher trim level than uh, what you got with just the base level. Uh, unique cloth, cloth bucket front seats are included. Okay, like I said, we've got a two-tone there. And we'll slide down more of the options. We're going to go with the all-weather tray style uh, floor liners, which, again, are very similar to the WeatherTechs. Sorry, guys, I keep right-clicking on that. I want that console vault again. And, again, we've got the AM, FM radio with the six speakers included. Engine for this one, I, I want the two-liter EcoBoost engine. Now, that's going to be a $1,085 upgrade if I want to go with that engine. Okay, and there's going to be some small options that sometimes get tacked on here when you choose a certain trim level or choose a certain package, okay? I want to go with the all-wheel drive again with the uh, EcoBoost engine, and it's building our vehicle. Eight-speed automatic transmission. All right, so let's check out the summary. Stickering it out with the next trim level, a few more options, still going with all-wheel drive, and then also uh, just simply going with the, uh, the EcoBoost engine. So, Again, you can keep it at a base level, not add anything, walk out a little more than 20000 or as you add options, you can see how the price is going to go up. So we're looking at $549 a month uh, with 60 months financing. The paint is actually a $390 add-on. That's interesting. I didn't realize that was going to happen. You can see the different packages that we added, the exterior options. Okay, now that's pushing us up to 32285 which is... Pretty comparable with a, a well-outfitted um, Chevy Colorado uh, that should get you into a two-wheel drive Silverado with a few options on it also. Again, I know I keep comparing the Silverado to the uh, Maverick, and I understand they're two different classes of pickup, but when somebody like me is looking for trucks, I'm going to look at the different price options and get as much as I possibly can for my buying dollar. All right, you can see all the different options that we've added on the right-hand side. And when it's all said and done, again, $32,285 monthly payment of $549. So that's what we have for the XLT. All right, so let's go ahead and take and uh, build out a Lariat with all the options that we possibly can. Let's just see how expensive we can make this little Maverick go up to in terms of price. So we'll go to build and price. And here we go. So the Lariat starts at $25,490. We want to add that two liter EcoBoost engine and we will start our build. Can we push this thing up into the 50s or 60s? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, we're going to go along with another shade of red that you get when you go to Larry App Model. Uh, let's see, Rapid Red, $495 add on. It says adding Rapid Red also requires the following changes all wheel drive with two liter EcoBoost engine and it removes the front wheel drive. So we're going to be all wheel drive only, which was my plan anyway. Net price change, it's going to jack the price up $8,090 adding the EcoBoost the paint, and the all-wheel drive. All right, let's continue. Moving on here. We won't pay attention to that final payment until we get all the options. All right, so LED signature lighting is included, 6.5-inch productivity screen, intelligent access with push-button start, eight-way power driver seat, dual-zone climate control, acoustic windshield, power sliding rear window, ambient lighting, flex bed with rear cubby storage, and so on. So uh, we're going to add the 4K tow package. It does include Copilot 360, which is the little safety package that gives you lane monitoring and collision uh, notifications and so on. We're going to pass on the FX4 off-road package because that modifies this vehicle heavily and actually loses a lot of the options I've already taken. Uh, first edition package is included and you get a picture of what your interior is going to look like. You got that sweet two-tone interior. Looks pretty cool. There's a lot of difference between the interior and the higher end and lower end models too. I was surprised like that. I thought maybe it'd look a little more uniform. All right, so we're going to go and add some 18-inch bright aluminum wheels. Oh, we can't do that. If we do that, it looks like it's going to change the color to shadow black. All right, do we have a different option here? Uh, we're going to pass on that too. Looks like we're just going to go, if I want to go with my current trim, yeah, we're just going to have to go with the rims that I have. Otherwise, it's going to force me to 
take a particular color vehicle and I want to go with red. All right, so we've got the included tires here. Do we have some different options? Yeah. So we're going to go with the recommended tires and wheels. We're going to add splash guards. Let's add a bed divider kit. Let's go ahead and add the toolbox swing case in there on the driver's side. That's going to be a toolbox I can put my tools in, in the bed. Uh, tonneau cover, I want that. I want the hard trifold tonneau cover. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add the TouchLink truck bed lighting. Going to pass. Oh, wow. That's going to change everything. All right. We're going to pass on that then. Uh, let's see. Let's go with the... What else do we have here? We're kind of fun. The protective film hood and fenders. We're going to add that on there too. Let's add a cargo bed net just because. I want the trailer hitch receiver with a four pin connector. Okay, so if you do that, ah, I see the four the four thousand pound uh, towing package is going to be deleted if you do that. All right, let's see what else do we have here. We want the full size spare tire. We'll go ahead and take the wheel lock kit and bed crossbars. No, nah, I don't think I need those. Okay, so the color of the interior is going to be desert brown. It's going to be two-tone. We've got the Active X bucket front seats that are included. Interior options. Oh, let's take a roadside assistance kit. Let's go and take a first aid kit. We'll go with the fancy carpeted uh, one-piece tray floor liners, which allow the carpet panel to be removed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not a smoker. We don't have to worry about that. Let's add the 110, 400 watt outlet. Let's add the console vault. There we go. Let's go with the Bang and Olufsen. Oh, wow. Okay, so no, we don't want to make those changes. Anything that's going to take away from what I've already added to it, we're not going to add that option. So at the end, we'll take a look and see what we have when this is all said and done. We want the Bang and Olufsen Premium Audio System with eight speakers. We've got Sync 3 included in it. We got Sirius XM. We've got the two liter EcoBoost engine. We've got the all wheel drive package, the eight speed automatic transmission for a final grand total of 38,550. So not as much as I thought. I thought maybe we can push this up into the 50 or $60,000 range, but you know what? This is actually not bad. Uh, $655 per month for 60 months financing. And I think that also includes, well, it does not include if you have to put a down payment on it also of like 2750, if I'm not mistaken. So in the end, this is what we came up with. You can check out all my different options, picking out all kinds of fun stuff. So this is how I would build my Lariat if I was going to pick up a Ford Maverick. And there's your interior also. And the powertrains. And if I want to, I can reserve it and uh, get my $38,550 ready to go. Still offering an incredible amount of value for the money. There's that interior that I was talking about. And let's take a look at the exterior and see what it's going to look like. There's your dash. It's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. I like that. All right. So now what we're going to do real quick, we'll just give you the general specifications about this vehicle, and we will go ahead and wrap up this little shopping experience. Okay, so this information is going to come from MotorTrend.com. All right. So powertrains for the Mavericks. If you go with that base engine, the 2.5 liter inline four, which also has an electric motor, co motor combo with it, the, uh, the hybrid powertrain that we mentioned earlier, you're looking at a total of 191 horsepower, um, looks like it does have, I believe it was 40 miles per gallon in the city and then, uh, what, 33 miles per gallon on the highway with 37 miles per gallon mixed, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if you go along with the uh, two liter turbocharged inline four, you're going to be boosting up to 250 horsepower, 277 foot pounds of torque uh, paired up with that eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, we don't have the fuel economy estimates yet, but we're guessing in the mid 20s, which is still pretty good uh, compared to full size pickups. And it looks like the front-wheel drive Maverick, Mavericks have 8.3 inches of ground clearance. All-wheel drive versions have 8.6 inches of ground clearance, which isn't too bad. Um, your approach, breakover, and departure angles for the Maverick are 20.6, 16.6, and 21.9 degrees for front-drive versions. All-wheel drive Mavericks have 21.6, 18.1, and 21.2 degrees of departure angle. So depending on what kind of terrain you're going to be going on, that information may be important to you. So the Maverick Hybrid and the EcoBoost engine can tow 2,000 pounds, but if you add the optional 4K towing package, which says it includes a hitch with a 7-pin connector, transmission oil cooler, an upgraded radiator and cooling fan, a shorter final drive ratio, and a trailer brake controller, which is awesome they're putting that on a smaller truck, you can tow up to 4,000 pounds or the weight of an average 21-foot boat. Uh, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, on the other hand, depending on what, what uh, powertrain you're going with, can tow between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds. I almost feel like we need to have a, a Hyundai Santa Cruz versus Ford Maverick 
uh, head-to-head comparison uh, at, because that's something that you could just go into all the different options that both of those vehicles have. Now, the bed of the Ford Maverick uh, is 4.5 feet long, so 4.5 feet long. It's 6 inches longer than the Santa Cruz's composite bed. By the way, the Maverick has a uh, steel bed. Uh, you've got two different open positions for the tailgate, and it says, uh, let's see here, if you are in the half-open mode, it can hold up to 18 sheets of 4 feet by 8 feet, 3-quarter inch plywood laid flat, uh, provided the overhanging portion of the load is properly strapped down and flagged. So that's going to be something for those of you that haul. This is going to give you an idea as to what kind of capability you're going to have. Also, uh, more options that we have here. Uh, you're looking at getting two 12-volt pre-wired power sources in the bed. So you'll be able to just plug in devices if you need to and different uh, tools. Uh, wired to a dedicated 20-amp circuit to support add-ons like lighting and air pumps, as well as two optional 110-volt, 400-watt outlets, one in the bed and another one in the actual cab itself, which is very cool. Just a few more fun little details to add here. It says elsewhere, the front door pockets are sized to fit one liter water bottles and smaller laptops or tablets. And the rear under seat storage is said to be large enough for laptop bags, rollerblades, and strangely, a fully inflated volleyball. So there you go. Now in the, uh, the back seat, they've got an area where you're able to tie things down. They have what's called fits or the Ford integrated tether system. Uh, these are slots that are going to be in the back seat area. And it says found at the back of the center console and underneath the rear bench. Items including cup holders, trash bins, grocery bag hooks, and storage dividers will be available. And here's the coolest thing. Ford says it's working to publish the slot geometry so people can 3D print their own fits accessories. So this could open up an entire world of things that you could pick up off of eBay or 3D print yourself at home if you want to. And last but not least, we've got the 8-inch center screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio. I have that in my vehicle. I absolutely love it. It is great. Uh, they also have Ford Connect uh, Wi-Fi. And you can see what that looks like in the picture right there. Now, the last thing that we have here is we've talked about the prices before, uh, the base price and so on. The last thing I wanted to give you is just the final power specifications. I think I might have missed the torque setting on some of the uh, the engine combo. So if you go with the 2.5 liter inline four hybrid powertrain, you're looking at 162 horsepower and 155 foot pounds of torque uh, for the engine itself, for the gas engine. And then you combine it with the electric motor, uh, which is going to give you a total of 191 horsepower okay and 173 foot pounds of torque so that's what you're looking at if you go that route now if you go with the two liter eco boost you're looking at 250 horsepower and 277 foot pounds of torque from the turbo du uh, dual overhead cam 16 valve inline four so lots and lots of information on this truck is now coming out for us here so the big question is which one would i buy which one would i go with Honestly, I would probably just go with the base XL model with all wheel drive and the EcoBoost. It's going to put me in under $30,000, more around $25,26 with an affordable monthly payment. Uh, and I think it's going to give me a lot of the options that, that I would look for in something like this. So it's just kind of funny in my own little voyage at looking at a new vehicle. You know, why am I looking at this one or that one or what's the reason why? For me, it's a combination of price, features, fuel economy, usability. And the Maverick, I mean, I, I've owned different vehicles from different brands, but the Ford Maverick is really getting my attention right now. So we'll see what people say about it, the drive, the ride, the noise, the harshness. Let's see if people think that it's uh, you know worth buying and if it's comfortable to ride in and so on. Is it powerful enough for the roads? And the last thing is, I wonder if they're going to do a Maverick electric. Now that we've got the F-150 Lightning coming out here, it'd be very cool if they did an all-electric Ford Maverick. I don't know if they'd have room to do it in the chassis because this is unibody. It's not a frame on body construction like a traditional pickup truck. Being it's unibody, I don't know if they have a place to put the batteries. So we'll see if we ever get ourselves a full electric Ford Maverick in the future. But anyway, guys, this is Travis. I want to thank you for watching Coffee, Computers, and more. Again, just going on a little shopping trip, checking out the Ford Maverick, looking at all the different options that are out there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people. And that's it. So you guys have fun. Take care. Be safe. Make sure you like and subscribe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.